Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zhen Hua from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So during the following 10 minutes, uh, I would like to briefly introduce our work on demand response. This is a joint work with Adam Steven from Caltech, uh, Yuan from HP Lab, and Mara and Rich from, also from the Berkeley Lab. So as we know, uh, demand response is crucial for smart grid. Actually, uh, it represents the transition of control paradigm from the traditional generation follows the demand to more like the demand follows the generation, at least to some extent. Uh, it is because uh, with more renewable generation, such as wind and solar, the supply side become less controllable and uh, has high uncertainty. Also, we can use energy storage to solve the problem. They are very expensive. Okay, so there are many programs designed for uh, demand response, uh, which can be further divided into two categories. One is a passive participation, one is an active one. And for the passive participation, the utility company will design the pricing scheme. And then the customer will behave, will control its own power demand under this pricing scheme. And uh, in the active participation, there is more interactive interaction in the electricity market. So this actually uh, decomposes the global optimization problem uh, for, from the society's perspective into two sub-problems. One is the kind of the local control problem for the user, uh, which needs the algorithm design. And the other one is more like the the pricing problem for the utility company, which requires a market design. These two are closely uh, coupled with each other. For example, when we design the, the pricing scheme, we need to consider what the customer will behave under different uh, pricing scheme. And in this talk, I will use a coincident peak pricing as one example. And uh, we have the case study together with uh, Fort Collins Utility Company and uh, uh, HP. And since HP has a data center in Fort Collins in Colorado, charged by this pricing scheme. The pricing scheme is also interesting by itself. Since, okay, let's say this, if this is a, a power consumption profile for a customer, and there is a, the peak demand for the customer itself. And uh, as a system as a whole, as like the utility company, it also has a peak hour for itself, for all the customers aggregated. So they call it coincident peak. And the power demand, power consumption from the user during this hour is called coincident peak demand. And the electricity bill is based on this two peak demand charging. And one is the peak demand of the customer itself, one is the demand during the system's peak hour together with the fixed charge and also the charge based on the total usage. And also the, the coefficient peak charging part is significant. Using the uh, rate scheme uh, from the utility company and also under a very uh, reasonable data center, uh, the coefficient peak charging, which is a purple part, is actually is about one third of the total electricity consumption, which means the coincident peak pricing, a coincident peak charging is very important. We need to deal with it. However, the the, the, the design of algorithm to handle the coincident peak charging is very challenging. The reason for this is that we have huge uncertainty in the coincident peak because we only know the peak at the end of the mass. And uh, this also makes the participation in coincident peak pricing very risky, for example, for the data center operators. Okay, let's see. Let, okay, let's now consider the problem from the data center operator's perspective. Here is uh, the optimization we want to solve, which means here the function f is the electricity bill. It depends not only on the uh, power consumption profile, which is denoted by d here, but also the coincident peak cover picked by the utility company, which is T here. For the data center operator, we want to minimize our own usage, which is D, try to minimize this one. 
However, for the data center, it does not know T, which is a cohesion peak hour, which is also decided by the utility company. We cannot directly solve this problem. Okay, one natural way to solve the problem is that we try to minimize the expected cost. And in order to do that, we get the uh, more than 20 years data from the utility company, and we do the data mining to show that there is a strong pattern, uh, strong weekly, daily, and a seasonal pattern in the coincident peak hour. And by doing this, we can minimize the expected cost. However, the problem, if we look, for the look into the future, the problem for this one is with renewable generation, uh, with more and more renewable integration, the prediction and also the pattern will become less and less accurate, which also motivates us to study whether we can provide some kind of the worst case guarantee in terms of the robust optimization. And uh, uh, the particular structure in this problem help us to design the online algorithm and with uh, the optimal comparative ratio as a performance evaluation. And this can be also extended to uh, different uh, scenario. For example, the utility company might also send warning signals uh, to the customer to tell them the falling hour might be a coincident peak hour to help them to make the decision. Uh, in this one, our system also works. And also, we might have some backup generator or renewable generation and uh, with prediction errors. And uh, also, we started with the uh, data center design, but this method can actually use for general building and ge for, for general customer. OK, this is all good from the data center operator's perspective. However, if we consider the demand response we get from the, this program, we can say if, for the first one, if data center want to minimize the average cost, what it will do? It will try to uh, avoid the, the period with high probability to be the cohesion peak hour. And this period are from the history data. It's not in the real time manner. And if the data center want to do the robust optimization for the worst case guarantee, it's even worse since they just try to uh, make their demand flat. So which me this means we have a very limited demand response from this kind of program, and uh, which also motivate us to do the, the market design, which is one of our ongoing work. And uh, for the market design, something I want to mention here is that uh, one way is that uh, by picking the different pricing scheme, you can actually change the objective function for each customer. So you can do that. And the more detailed information is that even within the pricing scheme, such as like the coincident peak pricing, there is also a problem, for example, how to pick the, the coincident peak hour and how to, uh, for example, when we send the warning, how many warning we should send. Since this will depend not only on the, the utilities uh, per, the utility's own consideration, but you need also to consider how the customer will respond to your signal. Whether they will turn on their backup generator or they will just ignore it. Yeah. This uh, have different impact. And also how many you can send also is a, uh, reflect the decision or, or the trade-off uh, from the utility perspective. Since if you send too few warning signal, uh, you might miss the, the cohesion peak hour. But if you send too many, the customer might just ignore your sin warning signal. OK, back to this one. Uh, this is just one simple example to show the, the separation of the global problem into the two parts. And this is just, one thing I want to mention here is that it is not just a separation for cost. And more interestingly, it is also the separation of the control and also the separation of the risk and the uncertainty into the two party. So who should manage the, who should be responsible to manage the uncertainty in this kind of problem is also very interesting. And uh, moving from theory to practice, as mary just mentioned, uh, the Berkeley Lab have developed the tool called OpenADR as an interface between the two component. Uh, we have the customer and we also have the utility company. And uh, for open ADR, the traditional way what we do is that the utility company will send the signal to the customer, and the customer is pre-programmed to make the response. And what we are currently working to uh, extend this work 
is to make it a, a, a closed loop by not doing the, not only doing the, the just receiving signal, but instead the customer will send the information about its flexibility to the utility company. And based on this information, the utility company will send the signal. And this is a one way to implement all the, 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 the theoretical work about algorithm design and market design in this way. And finally, I want to show one demo as a bonus slice. Since this one is uh, together with HP Lab, we show that uh, we can manage the data center load to follow the local renewable generation. Okay, in this uh, demonstration, uh, we have three components. Let's ignore the lower part. It's all about statistics. Uh, the upper part is three component. The middle part is IT. And uh, we have, I show three physical servers here, but in practice, we have many more. When the, it is green, it means the server is active. Otherwise, it's in sleep mode. And here, we have many virtual machines on the physical machine. And we can use either a renewable generation, like PV solar, or the uh, electricity from the power grid. And for cooling, we can use either oxide air cooling or chiller cooling. We have the time of the day and the oxide air temperature. Okay, then as time goes by, we can say now it's during night, so we don't have any PV solar generation, so we only have one server to serve the critical workload. And since oxide temperature is low, we use oxide air cooling. And later become the day, then we can we have renewable generation, we turn on all the servers to serve not only the critical workload, but also the delay tolerant workload. And uh, since oxide air temperature is high, we turn back to use the chiller cooling. And by doing this, we can better utilize the renewable generation. And uh, in this kind of the demand response setting, actually, we can modify this system uh, to respond not only to the local renewable generation, but also to the signal from the utility company. And by doing this, we can implement the system and have more impact uh, for data center demand response. Okay, let's finish my talk. Thank you. <laughs>